Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Board gamers, welcome back to Board Game Snobs. It's your fan favorite, Enrique. Fan favorite. Of course, I'm the fan favorite. I'm using air quotes if you can't see. Fan favorite. Okay, we all have the role here. I'm the comedic relief that you guys use to just humiliate me and make fun of me. We don't make that fun of you. That sounds harsh. We don't make fun of you. Yeah, but here's the thing it works though. You degrade yourself. Yes. <laughs> By your mere existence. By your mere existence. I'll let you take over, Jerry. Thank you, because I'm the star of the freaking show, <laughs> and I can't start unless someone says go. Wow. That would be the primary host, me, Gabby. Go. Yeah, thank oh, you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, the show can I start. Thought, uh, I thought that's what we had done. No, okay. you've got to say go. He just started talking. This is what happens when you get him tested and he knows he doesn't have COVID. He shows up on the doorstep and now he thinks he's cool and can record. It's not how it goes. It's not how it works. With not his how uh, are. Pablo mustache. Yes. Mm-mm. Pork chop sideburns. He, he is rocking the Pablo Escobar. Not Pablo Escobar. Uh, Pascal. Uh, the, the Pedro Pascal. He is the Mandalorian, which means I wish you would wear a helmet. I actually want a helmet. And that there's just a bunch online, but they're so expensive. But you wore a helmet until you were like 9 or 10, that football helmet thing. Oh, yeah. For the longest I time. I think that's how I got most of my head injuries, though. Well, you had to wear that to protect yourself. You were always yeah. testing it. <laughs> <laughs> Running headlong into vehicles. <laughs> setting off car alarms all over the neighborhood. All I don't over the you don't in rent. Well, it's because you hit your helmet. <laughs> I don't think you understand. Your dad used to always be like, Rick, hey, put your helmet back on. My little linebacker. Little did he know. <laughs> That's why you have no neck. That's why your neck is compressed. You've compressed your C3 through C5. Like an accordion. Mm, yes. That's okay, though. We have can't... you ever been to a chiropractor? No, I have not. Mm. I kind of want to, though. You might should check it out. Traction. Hmm. Traction? Yeah. Oh, you're that's talking where you stick your head in the thing and it pulls. You basically, have, they pull up your weight of your body by your neck. I have an inversion table at home. Really? Same thing. You just hang from your feet like Batman, and it stretches out your spine, and so that makes because be what, bats hang upside down. Correct. And stretching out—that's why they're so tall. Stretching out your spine is good for your sciatica. Hmm. It's very interesting. Fact. I played Raiders of Sciatica the other day. Oh. <laughs> They just all these old Vikings that are really hurting their back. <laughs> my lumbago! Oh, 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 there's shooting pain down my leg. I can't feel my leg. <laughs> oh, oh! Back. So why are we here? Well, uh, look, sh- uh, look. Hey, listen. At the gates if anybody's of Lumbago. Gonna, if, <laughs> if anybody's going to keep us on track, it's me. Because Jerry's half a glass into <laughs> wine. Well, sometimes it take both much. of you lose track, yes. and then I have to like jump in and tell you what's happening. Okay, what's happening, bro? To be all honest, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it's uh, it's dangerous to leave any hosting up to you. That's yes. why you need me to bring in the goodness. What is this I'm drinking? Uh, who knows? A uh, red blend. I don't know. Red blend? My <laughs> Sounds like something it. that came from a box. This is wine from a bottle. I mean, it's not far from it. It just, they moved it from a box into a bottle. No, and this then... is a bottled wine. Well, okay. And it tastes as rich mahogany and raspberry. <laughs> Let me see. Maho- raspberries uh, fermented in a mahogany box, perhaps. 1996. Mm-hmm. No, sorry. Mm-hmm. 93. When okay. Samurai Cop come out. <laughs> <laughs> Fermented with a pair of gym socks. Yes. Good stuff. I don't often drink wine, but when I do, I drink cheap wine. It's cheap. From your wife. Three dollars. From your wife's pantry She refuses there. to get... Well, she only shops at Aldi these days. Mm-hmm. And, like, they serve... They have wine for, like, three dollars a bottle. So, we're flush with wine. I'm flushed right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sulfites. I want to talk about uh, my metal calorian count. And the Mandalorian. Mm, the cops will test it on your way home. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. You'll be too high. You keep it up. This is the way home. <laughs> uh, That's what they keep referring to when they see the M count. Like they're afraid to say <laughs> midichlorians. Uh, check, the, check the M count. Check, show up. What is that? <laughs> Obi Wan was just a mean drunk. He was just always beating on people. Man, he's good. No, he's drunk. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Grogu's high M count. I was like, just say it. Everybody was, knows what you're was talking about. Obi, just one Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> Obi, I can only do. I can't do one or whatever. You can't do more than one. one. <laughs> uh, and Qui Gon Jinn. That's a joke in itself. Yes. Mm, I can't think of any other Sith or Jedi based alcohol. Uh, uh, that is like literally just there for the taking. Star Wars, George Lucas. Qui-Gon Jinn. Count, Make it. Count Doseki. That's my... <laughs> That's pretty good. That's, pretty, That's good. pretty good. I'm burning this up. I'm not even trying. Um, let me think for a second. Well, you think about it, because me and Enrique are going to talk about The Mandalorian. Enrique, right, then. you just watched The Mandalorian. Yes, I which did. Which you look strangely like the character, The Mandalorian, because they took his helmet off. Yeah. And he is sweaty. That was in the first season. His head was all sweaty, and that looked like you. He still looks like you now that you've kind of grown that mustache out a little bit. I'm very proud of The Pascal. You have that Pascal look looking. What did you think of the ending of The Mandalorian? Oh, it's fantastic. Why? 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 Because of Luke. No one expected to just have... Oh, wait, spoilers. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because there's British people who can't watch yeah, Disney+. Plus cut that because out. Because of the Queen. The Queen won't let them. That's yeah. why Megan moved back... Yeah, she probably cut that later. She did, but the the final season, fantastic. It's not the final season. It's oh, well, the not second the, season. The, There's going to be a absinthe. Oh, good one. <laughs> <laughs> Took you twenty minutes there, but you got it. Oh, uh, go ahead. No, okay, that was fine. No, but, it's not that great. Be sure and uh, talk the, into the microphone. It's like pointed like at a ninety degree mouth uh, angle like, from your like mouth. So and there use you your go. lips. That's it. Purse your lips. Purse them. Water lips. Mm-hmm. Those those Water. things underneath that nasty mustache of yours. Tell me why oh, yeah. you like The Mandalorian. Oh, which is great. Like it's well well written by a person who knows their Star Wars. Like Dallas Bryce Howard. Well, who Bryce. knows it? Yeah. Dallas. No, she was the director. What? But not on the last episode. Who? Go on, Enrique. But no, these people know what they're doing. George they know, Lucas. They know their source. They know Baloney Felony. They know basically the lore of Star Wars. Who's and they? We need to give credit where uh, credit's due. I believe it's Filoni, David Filoni, and Brin. Is it What's Brendan? The- Brendan. Yes. Okay. I don't really keep up with the names. I tried. What to. happened to the guy that did the MCU stuff? The Marvel guy. Um, He's MC writing. Hammer. The guy that's writing it. He seem. The you know the guy that's writing all this mess. Favreau. Yeah, he's the, he's he's the writer of yeah. all it. He's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? So I'm just thinking. This is my thing with mm. the Mandalorian. Okay, I have problems with it. Like, like what? So, all right. Here, number one. Got a real problem with you. I, here you go. Okay. I'd have really liked it better if they kept his helmet on the whole time, and then he took it off right when he's giving Yoda away, because that would have brought an even bigger manly tear to my eye. Yes. Because that'd I, been the first time you'd seen his face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, what actor is not going to want to show his face for two seasons of a show? I would have did. I'd done it. I think it would have been better. Like I said, they just would have revealed his face and it be just pay some actor. But it would have like I guess they try to keep try to keep it real of where is he really going to be in this situation? If Star Wars does one thing, it's keep it real. No, it doesn't. Actually, I think <laughs> I think the. Now, now I'm I'm worried about what they're going to do in the third season. Is he going to keep his helmet Look, off? Look, I know when you get into your storytelling, you like waving your head around, but I need you to talk into the I'm microphone. I'm talking into the mic. And close. I'm talking no, close to the mic. No, you're like closing your eyes. No, you're gesturing. I'm not. Your head is gesticulating quite a bit. Is Pascal going to keep his helmet on for season three? Mm. That's the hot topic I want to know about. Well, we also have to take account it is if he Keep your helmet on, bro. If he's still doing his... Mandalorian thing. Did he, he lose his religion? Like R.E.M.? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because Is he that, no longer that, religious? Because that's... Bo-Katan uh, uh, made, him, uh, made him an apostate. his face to someone. <laughs> From Mandalorianese? What is the religion? Uh, Death Watch? Um, he's a Mandalistanist. The 
I don't know. Well, he was. He a, ain't Catholic, so he's it, just they, automatically they, they, a Protestant well, no matter what he is. Uh, Starbucks said he was in a cult. That's why. <laughs> so that's all I know. She said you're brainwashed about keeping that armor on. Mm. Another thing that bothers me. So we got the helmet thing. Okay. Here's another thing. Okay. They can't take Baby Yoda out of the Mandalorian because that's the only thing this show's got going. Oh yeah, that right. and Bill Burr. So what's Bill Burr was better in the second episode. I agree. So what's going to happen? Is he going to get? Is like Luke going to get tired of taking care of Baby mm-hmm. Yoda, and he's going to have to go back and get him? Like what's that deal? Uh, where's Baby Yoda in uh, Force Awakens and Last Jedi? Ah, uh, well, see, that's what I'm worried about. So now, if you recall. That's when Kylo Ren, when he killed all the other Padawans, when that went down. He didn't kill Grogu. I think he did. By that time, Grogu would have been a Jedi. No, because that's just like like 10 years later. Grogu's still still a toddler. He's dead. Oh, it's about 30 years later. He's dead. No, it's not. No, no, it's literally like... No. It's 20 years later. Like 10 to 20 years later. Okay, so Grogu almost... No, the half in age. No, yeah. So he's he a, to, he's a, no, he's a baby now. So no, he's going to be. No, because we no, have to take a, into account that he's a tween. No, no, he's not. No, he is. If he's no. a baby at fifty, double that, then divide by no. two. Then that's <laughs> he's not about be, ten years old. No, so he's not a tween. Well, yeah, no. but he's. I'm just saying he's already powerful in the force. I'm just floating it out there that we're going to see baby Grugu get killed. Baby Groot? Groot. He's going to get killed by Kylo Ren. They should have a crossover. Baby Groot meets Baby Grogu. That's basically what that is. Oh, God. Nobody calls him Grogu. That's a terrible name. They should have come up with something. I've called him Grogu since I found out and hadn't looked back. They should have called him something better, like Clancy. (laughs) Gerald. (laughs) Gerald. Not something stupid like Trevor or something. Trevor. Trevor. Don't get me started on Trevor. Because it's just a thing. Trevors are known to be weak. I am. All right, so you like Mandalorian. Okay, so another thing. His ship got blown up. Yes. He's not going to be slinking around in you the You mean the uh, Serenity class Firefly? I'm talking about, yeah. Got no, it's the Firefly class. class. The Razor Serenity. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> or Chris. Razor Christ. <laughs> Razor Christ. No, don't call it that. Well, it's, it's his religion. Jesus shaved. <laughs> it got a close shave there. <laughs> oh, I did it, dude. Yeah, you know what I mean. Go with where you want no, with I'm that. I'm pretty sure he'll get a new ship. I know, but which one? Boba Fett ain't going to get him the slave one? He's going to well, Uber. Obviously. He's his way around the galaxy. Oh my I need to ride. <laughs> the whole show is like him on his phone at the app. <laughs> trying to look up rides. The people showing up. <laughs> and that's what they'll do. The, the Han Solo crossover. A Han oh, will God. pick him up. Give him a ride. He'll wind up with the Millennium Falcon at some point in time. He, I mean, he can. Han's not dead yet. There's no, there, yeah. See, spoilers. There's they no. could bring in what's his name who played the young Han. No, they ain't. Gonna, well, they, no, they can't do that. Bring him in. Do a deep fake. Yeah. What do you think about the deep fake the, on Luke? That was not deep fake. It was terrible CGI. That was deep faked. Yeah, I was deeply faked. Oh my god, that was atrocious. That's basically, Mark it was atrocious, Hamill. But if he had a CBA. <laughs> And you know what? I don't mind it. That, I, that, that, you might as well just put uh, Battlefront graphics on there. Oh That's God. pretty rough. It was rough, though. It wasn't as rough as Leia's deep fake back in the day on Rogue One. That was pretty rough. Yeah. Mm. And I, then they I had Tarkin, which was mm. all right. I, I don't. I don't. I don't remember Tarkin's like deep face. It was well. They had it. it ah, this is new technology. All right, they're they're messing around with it, and I don't like it. I don't like it. They just need to use Winter Soldier, dude. They should have. Looks just freaking like Mark Hamill. They should have got that dude and just made him look like this show up. Everybody would have known who it was. They could have done some, you know, makeup. You're good. Well, I mean, even if they did, it's like, who's this guy? Hi, I'm Luke Skywalker. He could have introduced (laughs) himself. Yes. Just comes in there assuming everybody should know who he is like he's a Jedi. Here's my green saber. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. Right. Oh, no, the, on the lightsabers, they should like have a way to like have their names written on them, like a neon light, like a neon light. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you turn it on, it has your name. Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. Oh you, you can buy advertising space. On I people's mean, if Skywalker. they can, uh, if they can handle the technology for a laser to be limited in a saber fashion, they can visit. They can put their names on there. I'm pretty sure that would be basically you just want a name tag. <laughs> so you really? yeah. Yes. Yes, you put a day. Why don't you wear name tags so on? Know who you are. LED lights. 
even have the hilt of it like kind of glow. Put some neon on there. And why on the like the then they can like all, itself? They could like if when they ignite it, have like you know when batters go up to bat, they have like their own music that comes on. Oh, <laughs> Just have like some motivational music come on, like. <laughs> I have the tiger every time you light it up. It's the I have the tiger. <laughs> yeah. You have your, have, your, have your own show, Pimp My Saber. Everybody's good. <laughs> I got some. The hilt of it spins. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Uh, so oh. also, his disintegration gun got blown up because it was in the car. It was in oh, the yeah, Razor Christ. Right. Oh, it got blown up too. Big. So that was what gun. he was using to kill Jawas. And I want to know, was he going to get another? <laughs> how will he commit genocide now? <laughs> yes. How is he going to be killing, relentlessly killing? With with the spear. The spear? You think he's just going to be using the spear? Yeah, like why not? I guess, but oh. still, that's kind of, that spear fighting thing can only go so far. Spear yeah. me the details on that one. No, mm. he could. Mm. That's, uh, that's cumbersome. I think he's going to be using the dark saber from here on out Ooh. oh yeah actually because he can't be... give it to the other chick no, because no. she has to fight I bet him. you that's what the third season will be all about basically the third season is him like opening hard to open packages with the dark saber bo-katan's yeah. just got to punch him and then he can give it to her he'd be like you've defeated me he's gonna buy a bag of chips like bring me the, bring me the dark saber <laughs> i feel i feel like someone's just gonna beat mando and take the the, the dark saber back, and then both. Bo- no, they're going to have a phony fight because he didn't have to kill Moff Gideon. Obviously, he just so all to- she's got to do is like punch him in the face, and he's going to be like, "Oh, here you go, here you go." She's not gonna like that's going to uh, that's going to be how they fix that. Like, no. there's no other way. No, because they're, they're not going to be no do way. a fight to his death because he didn't kill Moff Gideon. They've eliminated that option. No, 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 no. they're no. going to have to. Because <laughs> that's dumb, though. Okay, and so like also, I seen this stup- There's a meme on like Bo-Katan's like, oh, you're part of the stupid cult that sticks to these stupid uh, yeah. things. Like, don't take your helmet off. Yeah. Oh, but here's the dark saber. Let me just hand it to you. Oh no, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, we're all a little bit hypocritical. Okay, just a tad, just a tad. She's trying to get back to the ruling class. That's what you got to do. Everybody know you won't be king or queen Mando. You got to beat somebody, take their knife. Favorite side character of the show. Favorite side character besides Bill Burr, because that's obviously the best. Um, Give me a moment. You know, like ugh, when you say side character. I'm talking all the in his hop along Cassidy of the galaxy, what? and he visits the like the wit like the, the the all the Mandalorians, the three blue Mandalorians. You got Kara. I like Kara. You got uh, uh, Creed, Apollo. I don't like him. You got uh, uh, Timothy Oliphant. That was Justified. Cool. He needs to come back. Bill Burr. I love Bill Burr. Uh, Bill Burr's my now favorite. Now you got Bo-Katan and her sidekicks. Bill Burr's my favorite. The hands down. No. Just because I like Bill Burr, but also he kind of adds some levity to the show. It's like... You, everybody's super serious. Everybody's super serious, which that's one thing I, I hated about actually, the prequels. Everybody was super serious. Yes. And now it's like... You got the least serious person is Bill Burr, and he brings it down. To me, they've already killed off the best side character. Who? Quill. Forgot about him, didn't you? Is that the dude? The dude? The bounty hunter dude? What guy? No! No. I have spoken. Oh, that guy. I'm sorry. You're talking about Nick Nolte. Nah, he's that dead. Was, I know. He's I dead. really liked him, and he was funny. He wasn't funny. You raved about Quill in the first season. I, You've already forgotten I him. I said he was all no, right. No, you did uh, not. You did liked him. Not. And you ran around saying, I have spoken after everything you said. Well, I just like the phrase. It was a good catchphrase. <laughs> no. Um, I like Bill Burr for the same reasons. He does add levity. I really like Timmy the Oliphant because he's gorgeous to look at. He is um, gorgeous. I like Bo Katan because it's Starbuck, but that's not really fair. She didn't really have much personality in her scenes. I would have to go with. I gotta go, Bill Burr. The, the second episode, the first episode, I did not like him. He, he, he didn't have enough chance to show his character. I really wish the IG robot had lived. Oh, uh, that was the IG, really, I, I was going to talk about him. IG I love the IG because that, was that, that there's always one death in the show that like gets you, and to me that was I it. Because IG him. was like, take your helmet off. I'm not human. And he, 
sprays the neosporin on I him. I feel bad. I forgot about And that him. somehow heals his carotid artery wound. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like, I want some of that spray. Like, it's he like, just shows up. Like, don't worry, fam. I got I you. I spray. Yeah, you're, you've got an internal hemorrhage. Super healing. He sprays him, and then he blows up. I forgot He's always trying to self-destruct. Because he was good. Hey, yeah, IG-11 was pretty legit. I, I mean, I, to me, they killed off two really good characters. Yeah. Yeah. In the first season. But you've got to do that or else there's no stakes in a show. Uh, and yeah. that's why I like the stakes. You know, you I gotta like have stakes. stakes. I like that Wagyu. So anyways, Mandalorian. We love it. It's great. But I want to talk about some of the other shows that are coming out. Okay. I have a list here. Let me pull up my list here. Ahsoka Tan. That plus... Um, Rogue Squadron, the TV show? No, it's bad not a TV batch. show. It's a movie. Whatever. Oh, it's a movie? Yeah. So you're, you're, um, you don't even know what The you're Bad Batch. About. Yeah, Bad mm-hmm. Batch. Is that about like uh, some about beer I messed up on? So you got Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is supposedly going to start filming in 2021. Oh, God. So that's going to be good. I'm going to lay it out there. Anything with Ewan McGregor in it, that was like, that role should have been, that was his role. Like the prequels. That was great. Like Ewan just nailed it. But at the same time, oh, the 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 just the huh? I, I just don't even know what to say. <laughs> I mean, spit it out, man. It, just spit it out. The dialogue was awful. They made everything too serious. They just went. Just, oh no! When the when they tried to crack their terrible jokes, like when him and Anakin were doing their repartee. <laughs> It was so cringy. Yeah, oh yeah. It was it was bad. So it cringy. Was bad. Like trying to make a cheesy buddy cop show like at the beginning of these several episodes. So Uma McGregor right there, that's the one I'm excited about. The second one that I'm really excited about is Ahsoka. Mainly because Admiral Thrawn's gonna be in that one. Oh, Who's snap. gonna play Admiral Thrawn if it's not Benedict or Cumberbatch? It has to be. It has to be Benedict or Cumberbatch. It has to be. Uh somebody from the Blue Man group. No. If nice. it's who else could be that besides Cumberbatch? Like, I'm going to have to do like more research on that. There's like uh, <laughs> no research. Um, going to research. do the dude that's played like a uh, 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 Red Devil from Captain oh, America. You talking about the dude Red and Skull? Agent Smith? Agent Smith. Oh, that dude could be Thrawn. Uh, he could be, but he's getting old. But he won't do that because yeah. he doesn't like franchise stuff yeah no no he, he, he bails out of everything he yeah, does he's not any good let's do uh who else could there be for admiral thrawn did and you it, read heir to the empire that trilogy uh-uh no i was read. i read the uh the darth what's his name the that darth tri- bane darth bane working on that okay so in the 80s uh yeah it was the 80s timothy zahn wrote a trilogy that took place after return of the jedi mm-hmm that's where he invented Timoth- uh, Timothy. Timothy's on. He invented Admiral Thrawn. I need to read that. It's like that's the original trilogy that has Thrawn. What's like, it called? Uh, the first book is called Heir to the Empire. Okay, we got that. So Filoni and Favreau are going to develop the Mandal- the Mandalorian titled Rangers of the New Republic. So it's the same timeline as the Mandalorian. So I don't know what the Rangers of the New Republic are going to be. But that's got some that's some potential. I think that's going to be neat. That's going to s- have Walker in it, with, starring Chuck Norris. I want to see cops. I want to see him, cops. In put Star him in Wars. a storm. He's the only stormtrooper that will take his helmet off. Yeah. and can shoot right. There you go. Star Wars Andor. We get to see uh, basically the only reason anybody's going to watch Andor because Cassie and Andor is the K two S O. Oh my God. K two S O. Alan Tudyk, I'm sure, is available. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they're talking about bringing back Firefly. Disney has bought it. Don't, they're they're don't, saying they're going to do it. Don't. I hope not. Don't. And then Enrique likes the Bad Batch, Bad which batch. is the Clone Wars. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be like the Three Stooges. What? I mean, if if you have a bad batch of stormtroopers, they're already Wait, have terrible. You watched, watched the they final can't animated nothing. series. They, they just, can't do nothing. Wouldn't that be a great Star Wars comedy? Is three stormtroopers <laughs> like that are just like like they're just super inept more than the rest. It's like you go, oh my god, and you're like, oh my, and they they fall they're literally. It's, it's like, like yeah, police guys, academy yeah. with stormtroopers. What if we make Jar Jar Binks into a character, but they're clones? Boom. So basically, they just have to go down. Like we got to go to Hoth. This is cold. And all, <laughs> like you get to relive all the battles through their Star. They need to make a comedy show based in the Star Wars universe. They're always getting and, shot, but somehow have survive. To be Jar Jar Binks. Then no, uh, going, Jar Jar's yeah. not funny. So I was talking to some unless people. you're five years old. 
Um, so here's the deal. I've been talking to, you know, John and Jim Wallace. Yes. Talking to Jim the other day. Jim's a big Star Wars fan. Yes. Right. Jim says, okay, here's what he, they... He, like, texts, like, at 8 o'clock in the morning. Did you see Mandalorian? Yes. I'm like, no, I just woke up. <laughs> I was at work the other day. He called me. We talked for 45 minutes. And it started the conversation with, have you seen the Mandalorian? I was like, yes. And then he just dumps on me. So here's his thing. He pitched this idea to me. He pitched this idea to me like I was Favreau. Like, I could get this done. <laughs> he was this invested. So he goes, the worst character in all of Star Wars is Jar Jar Binks, obviously. Yes. He says, bring him back in The Mandalorian. Why and how? I was like, that's, that's, that's ludicrous. And then Jim goes to say, no, wait a minute. The world, the whole universe fell apart because of Jar Jar. He got Palpatine basically elected, caused all this mess. So Jar Jar has lived through all this. And so now Mando comes across him and he is just this old jaded person. Who, and it's like a redemption arc for Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> and so Jim tells... So he's like the cranky version, like Luke, but Jar Jar. Yes, but he's, he says he's lost his accent because he, says, so he's like, <laughs> he pitches all this to me. And he's like, they need to bring Jar Jar back. He's they, just like, Miso want to be alone. Yes, something like that. So he desperately wants to bring Jar Jar back just to try to correct the previous... The sense. dark, gritty reboot of the Jar Jar, Jar Binks. <laughs> Star Wars Jar Jar. <laughs> No, like somebody did something like it was called Binks. Binks. <laughs> <laughs> Just Star Wars Binks. DJ posted that like on something. I was like, but it was like looked super real. I was like, tell me that's not real. <laughs> and like for a while he kept going. I was like, please tell me Binks is not a real thing because they were like, un- like it's like a like everybody has their show now. It does. You're gonna have R two D two have his little <laughs> show. Everybody's got a show. Uh, but Star Wars is good, and I'm glad that. How uh, do they? Tr- how do they get around in Star Wars? What do you mean? How do they get around? Faster than light speed. FTL, right? Yeah. Is that what they call hyper, it? Hyper hyper jumps, hyperspace. They just call it hyper jumps. They jump to sp- hyper speed. They don't really go into the science of that in Star Wars. Well, do no, they? it's because you can't jump faster than light. I can't watch this. You can't. No, <laughs> you did it. You, you, no, you did it. Although they just did quantum teleportation for the first time. Did you see that? No, I thought they've like, no, not quantum teleportation. I know yeah. they've done teleportation. No, they've done it 26 miles away. <laughs> Legit. Te- explain. All right. I'll read you the article since you don't do science. But I do do science. You I do do, do science. science. <laughs> I do do, do science. science. <laughs> I do do science. Thank you, Jar Jar. <laughs> Me so so sciencey. Uh, no, okay, not not to get into too murky of an area, but didn't wasn't there like a thing about Jar Jar? Like he was racist, supposedly. Yeah. No, no, he wasn't racist. He was a racist character type. Like it was like a Rastafarian Jamaican accent, and it was obvious that when they designed that character there was a lot of racial undertones in it and so okay so then how could you ever bring that back well in 1999 they weren't thinking about that and they just kept him in for some reason i know that but i'm talking about now like i said just lose the lose the racial undertones so So he literally would have to just stop talk like the one thing that defines jar jar binks take it out no that's just his speech maybe he's he's been around he's been around he's lost his accent 40 years of living outside. I am Jar Jar Binks. Pretty much. So, yeah, that's why. That's, I mean, that's the only way you can get it done. It's the only way you get it done. Uh, speaking now, of, I know they teleported some. Uh, it's quantum internet. Like photon light molecules no, 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 this some was, time ago. No, this was just recently. This was, this was having to do with quantum entanglement. So, basically, uh, the University of Calgary and AT&T have now successfully teleported quibits, which are the basic units of quantum information, um, across 14 miles of fiber optic cables. This is because of quantum entanglement, the phenomenon in which quantum particles, which are mysteriously entangled because they behave exactly the same way when they're far from each other. When quantum internet is finally a thing, it will make life, Wi-Fi look obsolete. We will have achieved and sustained high-fidelity quantum transportation utilizing time bin. Basically, the internet's going to be so fast, we won't know what to do. Like, it'll just completely, like, instantaneously. Sounds good to me. And that's what we need, desperately. Because how can Enrique watch his anime Star Wars shows? TikTok. TikTok. I don't want to hear any more TikTok about you. What do you mean TikTok? I don't you need to start a TikTok. I just saw, like, the the top earner in TikTok makes, like, $8 million a year. How do you TikTok? And all she does is dance. Me? 
Oh, oh, so everybody knows I went camping, right? Yes. They are usually attractive people, though, so we might need to change a few things. You're going to have to get yeah. abs. Can, abs. You get, abs. can you get, like, cut and, like, start lifting? I guess And learn could. dance moves? Uh, no. Can you dance? No. Well, if you don't dance, you're no friend of mine. So Big when I went camping, there was people camping just down the way from us, which we could see. And these poor people had with them. Their teenage daughter, who literally, when they showed up, I thought to myself, why? Why would you come camping out here in the freezing temperature? Because I'm what I'm doing. But it's like, why would these people? So their daughter shows up wearing Uggs, you know, the boots with the fur. Yeah. yeah. She didn't have the apple bottom jeans. She just had the boots with the fur. Uh-huh. She set up her, while her parents were setting up the tent, she set up, she's like 16, 17, 18, set up her camera and was obviously doing these TikTok dances. <laughs> and I guess you couldn't tell, like, I'm sitting there watching her do these goofy, uh-huh. like, just doing no, this. No, yeah. And yeah. it's like, why? What is, why is this a thing? It's a thing. This is and what thing. it is. TikTok dancing is not dancing. You're literally just moving, moving in accord with the music so that it looks somewhat cool. Isn't that? But if you were to do that in a real dance, it's just like. Mm. Isn't that? <laughs> isn't that technically dancing? Just moving with the music? No, uh, but no. dancing like you look, you look good. You're smooth. You're. <laughs> you so you. Uh, wow, wow. No, stop that. So, but stop like, already. <laughs> but like, uh, I, I will see young mm-hmm. kids at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I will see young kids at Walmart. Walking down the aisle doing, yeah, they'll just be doing these TikTok dances. Like they, maybe like they, they're practicing. Maybe they call it TikToks because you do have like a tick. <laughs> it's like you've got Tourette's. <laughs> Tourette's. Tourette's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's why. I don't know. I'm old. I'm getting old. I don't know TikToks. All I know is that TikToks are not a thing and had not been a thing. I thought they shut them down. Weren't they like spies? Uh, China. Weren't they like stealing? Was that wasn't it, Enrique? I'm oh, pretty sure that was China. Wasn't China? They going may through? have gotten a little information, but you know, I'm gonna call it Ben Maddox. We're gonna cue it on this that, big I'm time. I'm sure TikTok has been banned in some country. Ben, get on it. But don't take my word on that. Uh, nobody takes your word on anything. Yes. I, I want to talk about warp speed. On uh, warp's edge, much like the Grazer Christ. Warp's edge is a board game. Where's it? Where is it? Where See, I, I tried to, I tried to lead you into that with my hyperdrive yeah, talk, and you I, didn't do it. I can't hard merge when I'm drinking wine. What did you do with it? It's right over here. Well. Sh- Show the box. Are, are we live on I TV? I see the box so I can see. All right, never yeah, that's mind. That's a tiny box. I'll go by a memory. It's Scott what's, Alms. What's in the box? Scott Alms did, was the designer. Scott in Alms games. for the poor. I'm sure so, you've never heard of that one. Scott Alms. <laughs> I don't wonder if he does give to the poor. Uh, he's designed a lot of games, such as that card game that you had, Claim, and yeah. the other card game that you had, Claim 2, yeah. and the other card game that was called Claim Something. And then he did Heroes of the Land, Sea, and Sky. And then he also did... Uh, I like that bidding game we had. The Tiny Epic. Oh. A Tiny Epic Everything is his. Uh, Tiny- what was that bidding game? Where the Star. Was the- yeah, uh, Stardust. Is that his? Something like that. Yeah. Where you like bidding on stars and suns mm-hmm. and comets? Yeah. I like that one. That was good. So Scott Alms is an OG designer. And so he did a solo-only game called Warp's Edge. Won't bore you with the details of it, but the mechanic is it's a bag builder. And you have a ship. You select a ship. It's got shields and hull. And you dig it into this bag. You pull out five tokens, and you use those tokens to defeat the fighters of the mothership before attacking the mothership. Mm-hmm. Pretty straightforward. What he did with this game was take everything that you would assume the mechanic would do, and he changed it just a little bit. And that is why this game is incredible for a solo game. I brought it for you to play because I've played it several times. It has a little book in it. It's like a narrative book that helps you choose your ship and your enemies and all that that you can go through. It's not like a legacy game, but it helps you set the game up. Uh It tells you a little bit of backstory. It's completely superfluous. i got to have backstory. You don't need it. I didn't even know where this ship came from and why do I have it. I'll tell you why this ship. Well, the the book will do that for you. But the the theme of Warp's Edge is it's kind of like it's it, well, it's a little bit like Tenet. <laughs> After each round, you go back. There's four rounds, and so the first round, you kind of suck. Like you don't have many skills, you don't have a lot of 
lot of chits in your bag. And so after you get to a certain point, when you can't pull out any more chits in your bag, you reset everything. Uh You shuffle all the enemies you defeated, everything. So you know what's in the enemy's deck, and then you try it again, and then you try it again, and then hopefully on the fourth time, you're able to defeat all the enemies. So is it time travel? Yeah. It's Warp's Edge. Every time you get to a certain point, you go back. And so it's basically you're able to... Slingshot engage. You're basically going around the sun, as you know, in Star Trek and saving the whales. The neat thing about it is every little thing that you think you know how it works, it works slightly different. For instance, like in most games, you take damage, you move your little tracker down on the shields, and you lose shield points or whatnot. But in this game, not only are you losing points against your shield, you're also having to discard chits that you've used previously. So out of your discard pile, you get hit twice. you got to discard two chits from your discharge pile. That's interesting because you know when you're going to get hit. Because when you shoot at the enemies, you either have to evade them or completely destroy them. If you don't have enough evasion points or enough laser points to destroy them, you just stun them and they miss you. If you don't place any tokens on the enemies, they obviously are going to hit you. So you know, I'm going to take X amount of damage. I'm going to have to get rid of X amount of of chits. This is what I'm looking at. The interesting part about it is that all the decisions make sense. It's it's and I've griped about bag builders before because basically it's just deck building and I'm not a great I don't like deck building very much. But this game does deck building or bag building right. It's quick, it's easy. There's a brief little 20 minute video that you can watch. The rules come out. Uh, the rules are very simple. After you've learned that, there's a variety of enemies and each enemy is different. There's a variety of, of um, uh, difficulty levels. There's a variety of each individual ships. And each ship has its own special power, own special thing that does. There's just a lot of variety in such a small game. And I was shocked that I liked this game as much as I did. Um, How do you stun? Like, what's the difference between stun and okay. destroy? So just to give you an idea. When you deliver, like, bad news they didn't expect? <laughs> Grandma's dead! Like, your grandmother is dead. No. <laughs> so you have the mothership. They veer into the nearest planet. You have the mothership that you're attacking. Mm-hmm. And on each round, you deal out four f- fighters. And those fighters are attacking you. And on one side, it shows what it takes to destroy them. On the other side, it shows what it takes to evade them. If you destroy or evade them, they, they go into the discard. It's like you got around them. Okay. And so on destroy, it might say they take two shots or three shots to destroy and on evade, it might take one evasion or two evasion, three evasion, whatnot. Under each, under the destroy and the evasion is what you get if you destroy or evade them, and each are different. So if I blow this ship up, I get this bonus, but if I evade it, I get this bonus. Mm-hmm. And so when you reach into the bag and you pull out your chits, sometimes you don't want to evade a ship. You want to destroy it because the bonus is so good, and the right. bonus is generally adding other tokens into your bag or drawing more tokens out of your bag. There's just a lot that you're doing with it. So it's like looking at the deck of cards and going, I'm going to place these tokens here. I'm going to place these tokens there and realizing, all right, from the first turn, I I know there's this big bad enemy in here uh, because each enemy is different and he's probably going to come out and I want to destroy him because if I destroy him, I get this one big bonus and then that goes into my bag and then I can use it. There's a, it just stacks. It culminates. And that's what's so neat is that you play the game four times in a row. Uh You're playing it quickly, going through the deck, going through the deck four different times. And you, by the fourth time, you know, this is what it takes to defeat these guys. This is what I'm going to do. And it's just neat. It's, it's like I said, simple to learn the components. The artwork is weird. Like, it has this very retro feel on it, and the rest of the artwork inside has that same retro feel to it. And it's all kind of like, I don't want to say cheesy, but it's just, it feels very 70-ish. Except for some of the cards that are used in it, like the uh, special ability cards. Those are really neat. Everything else has this very drab looking... like a nice insert. Great insert. You use the insert to play the game. You take those inserts out. There's actually three of them. Two of them for your tokens... And then another one where you kind of have your cards and your other excess tokens in. Um, so, yeah, the fact that this game has an insert and uh, that insert, nice. it's nice. It's very, very nice. Um, I almost backed this on Kickstarter. Then I watched a playthrough of it and thought, it, I don't know, something about the playthrough. I was like, oh, that doesn't really look like something I'd be interested in because it looked like kind of repetitive or something. It is re- repetitive, but it's repetitive to the point. It's it's not that repetitive. Right. Like you are doing the same I mean, thing. Most but you're, games are repetitive. You're preparing. Degree. Um I think this has killed coffee roasters for me. Oh 
Oh, about time. Thank God. I have the app for Coffee Roasters. Well, that I, killed Coffee Roasters. I played. I like the app. I like Coffee Roasters, but I just don't. Put stuff in a bag. Pull it out. Hey, and guess what? When you pull that stuff out, you may not literally be able to do anything with it. So then what do you do? Well, put it back in the bag. So that's okay. And that you're, if that's your main complaint about Coffee Roasters is the repetitiveness and the lack of use of the tokens, you will love Warp's Edge. Love it already. Um, Sold. Your, your, Top game of 2020. Your pocket land ship game. It's my third game I've played of 2020. That pocket land ship game that you let me borrow. That's yes. very... Uh, it's very pedestrian. Well, uh, I, I highly recommend if you're a solo player and you like... If you, if you have played Coffee Roasters and you like Coffee Roasters, then you must get Warp's Edge. If you don't have Coffee Roasters, don't buy Coffee Roasters. Buy Warp's Edge. If you're a solo player, um, this is this is going to be one of those quintessential games i think next year there's also a, a expansion coming out already for it Good. adding more to it i am really enthused by it now we play a online bag building game with our dear friends who are oh, our dear super friends. bored sunday uh don't plug them oh okay plug are we them. not plug- are we not hey are we part of the gateway network we still? are still part of the gateway network but oh what like there's a several people in the network yeah i don't have it pulled up but we played with, if you want to go go to Gateway Network and watch the shows, it's all great and everything. Uh, um, super, you're the one that signed up. I'm so bored of it now. <laughs> I'm so bored of it. I thought that having, I thought being a part See? of it. See, like, Ryan, you suck. this is what you get when you deal with Jerry. I thought that it was going to be like more of a mafia. Like we were going to be able to slowly take over board gaming media. And so far, all it is, is just, it's just not what it turned out to be. How I'm, dare you? Uh, so we played with the. Uh, you board. just hurt Jeff's feelings. <sighs> Don't get me started on Jeff. Jeff is the Jar Jar Binks of board game media. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, Jeff. Jeff Jar Jar. There you go. That's all you got to know. I'm just saying that Jeff. He can get off. Me. <laughs> I'm tired of dealing with Jeff. Jeff is always why talking may, trash. Why? Stop being so angry. Jeff is always talking trash. The mad board game. He's angry. It, well, I'm sure he's, he's angry. Wrathful he's vengeful. wrathful and Um But we played with, on uh, Board Game yes, Arena. Frankie and Brian of uh, Super Board Sunday. No, we played on Tabletopia. I'm sorry. Or Tabletop Simulator. Tabletop Simulator. We played Orleans. Don't do that. And I beat y'all soundly. Don't do that. Beat you soundly. Tell them of my winning I, I was barely remembering how to play Orleans, and yes, you destroyed. I had like twenty points. I killed <laughs> you. Had you. like seventy. What did you do? Nothing. I literally did nothing. So that's why I lost. Orleans is another bag builder that I don't like. And Actually, Gobby, Jerry scored one hundred and thirteen. I scored seventy nine. Orleans Brian had one oh nine. Frankie had ninety one. So they were all pretty close. Frankie I was, was way there? in the back. Frankie was there. Frankie played with us. <laughs> Frankie of the North. Oh. Um, anyways, Orleans is one of those bag building games that I don't, I just don't like bag builders. And I think the reason I didn't like Orleans as a bag builder was I always seemed like the bag was just not, there was no need for it. Like I just kept getting, I never, I never had a full bag. I guess that's what I want to say. I think I, I, and so I always didn't like it. Why don't we change it to the, like a sack? And I, well, that might help. So when we played it on, I, I played played it completely differently when we played on Tabletop Simulator, and I did have a full sack. And having that full sack made me seem like, oh, okay. It was I now, bulging. It was bulging. This bulging sack helped me to get through and dominate Frankie and whoever else played with us. Um, but the fact is, is that I've somewhat changed my tune on Orleans. I want to give it a second uh, shot. I would have never thought Tabletop Simulator would lead you to change your mind on Orleans. Not the best game. Not the base game. I want to try it with the expansions, which you keep buying and we never play. I have the one, yes, and we haven't, like, literally, we have been unable to play since I purchased it. What? Well, you purchased it three I wa- years ago. I wa- <laughs> Well, you keep saying you don't want to play it. I hate it, but now I want to try it again. Okay. I've changed my mind. I do want to get, I do not have the expansion, however, that has the different modules of, like, cooperative and solo. I don't want that. I don't want to cooperate, I want to and do. I don't want to solo. I, I want to fight. Well, then... We need to play the expansion. That's why I want to play the expansion. So, Orleans, the base game to me, has always been overrated. 
Never. As a mechanic, bag building, not your favorite. No, bag building, deck building, all that stuff. I don't like he that. doesn't like the randomness. I don't like it. I don't like the randomness. And nor do but I... With, but, but in those games, you're supposed to work to take out the randomness. That's the thing. You build up your quality. Yeah, but... Like he, so, so then you know, like, okay, at some point, I know I've only got good stuff in here, so now I'm pulling out good stuff, and I've gotten rid of the junk. Yeah, but that's the thing with him. He's like... Something doesn't just work out with him like whatsoever. But when I when I play against him, uh, I I destroy him. You don't oh, destroy I me. Do. Oh, he said any card game that you give me, I learn it so quickly. I am that you keep it away from. And me. that'll do it for this show. Talk some sense. I'm into Gobby. Me. I'm about to slap the fire. This out is you. Jerry. The, Duchess of Essex say is going to come down here. Enrique, and say goodbye. Knock the goodbye, fire. Out. Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. Still there? Hello? Hey. Hey, Gabby here. We don't get to podcast a whole lot uh, together, and half the time when we do get together, we have to podcast several at once, and usually we forget everything we meant to say. This is from some time ago, actually December. Uh, There were several people that had us as number one on their Spotify and some that said they don't use Spotify, but we were still number one. I wanted to say thank you to Michael Langford, Jeffrey Glasgow, Brian Levick, Levick, I never know how to say your last name, Levickali, Sam Rouleau, Nick Shaw, Troy Clohesse, Dustin Daly, Peter Albert Williams, Chad Chasson actually used Spotify, and we were number one. Richard Lupino. Also, we received a very nice email from Raymond Simmons about our mini pod session number six with Sade. Thank you for your kind words, sir. If you would like to write us, please email us at boardgamesnobs. I had to think about it for a second. Boardgamesnobs at gmail.com. Also, we are a proud member of the Gateway Network. Check out the Gateway Network. It has many members in it, many podcasts, Fantasy and Some Flights, Super Board Sunday, Game Casters, Date Night Dice, those are the ones that come right to the top of my head, several YouTube channels, Brian's Got Games, Meeple Mentor, and others. I will need to familiarize myself with them. But thanks. Check out those guys on the Gateway Network. You can find that on Instagram. 